It tells us that Dugan must invest relationship specific capital to facilitate a purchase from Gavin. So immediately I start thinking this is probably a holdup problem. And in fact, the next sentence gives it away that it is. The value that they can create is given by some function of the amount Dugan invests, which they say is I. It tells us that bargaining power is such that the result of any negotiation or renegotiation will result in Dugan receiving one fourth of what is under negotiation and Gavin receiving three quarters or three fourths. The question says, how much should Dugan invest if he anticipates Gavin will renegotiate the terms of any prior agreement they have reached once the investment is sunk? So we know that that is synonymous with the holdup problem. We're going to look at how much Dugan should invest or what I is equal to when we have the holdup problem. So the total surplus for Dugan is going to be the value divided by four minus the investment not divided by four. We take the derivative with respect to I, set it equal to zero and solve for this case, I to be equal to 625. The next question says, suppose Dugan hires Marty to monitor the initial agreement and the resulting investment. And it tells us that Marty can sometimes hold Gavin to the initial agreement and Gavin will have to reimburse Dugan for three fourths of the investment. It says the probability that Dugan will be able to hold Gavin to the initial agreement with Marty's records is F. And the probability is zero without a monitor. If he can't, renegotiation after the investment is sunk will result in a split of V with no compensation to Dugan for his investment. So this time he didn't give us an actual probability, he just defined it as F. He left it in notation form. And we see our answer choices, uh, we're gonna be leaving this in notation. It says, which of the following now represents the first order condition, the optimization condition for Dugan's problem? So when you see first order condition, that just means write Dugan's problem out, take the derivative, set it equal to zero. That'll give you your first order condition. So let's look at what total surplus for Dugan looks like. Well, F percent of the time, we're gonna have value minus investment divided by four. The reason I've left value without putting the value as a V without putting our value function in there is I looked at the answer choices and I saw the answer choices didn't have that value function anywhere in them. So I was gonna leave just the V in there and you'll see that that is the right way to do this one. One minus F is the probability that we are gonna have the holdup problem. So we'll have V divided by four minus I by itself. So from here we can, I'm just gonna rearrange things a little bit. I split up the one fourth V and the one fourth I. And again, the one fourth V over here, I haven't done anything yet to it. From here, I wanna distribute through my F and I wanna foil this part. So I have F times one fourth V minus F times one fourth I plus this is where I foiled first, outside, inner, last to get that. Now I'm ready to take my derivative of the total surplus for Dugan with respect to I. Notice that the value function itself had I in it. It was like 200 I or something like that, right? If the value function has I in it, when we take the derivative of the value function and we're leaving it in notation form, we're just gonna get DV DI. So don't be too confused by that. It's kind of scary when, it, when you look at it at first, but this is just saying the derivative of the value function with respect to I, so we know that V won't drop because V has I inside of it. So V is not just a variable that will drop out and we treat it like a number. V is a function of I, therefore we're gonna leave DV DI when we take the derivative with respect to I. So we get F times 1 fourth DV DI, DV over DI, minus F times 1 fourth because the I falls out in the derivative, plus 1 fourth DV over DI, minus one because the minus I just becomes minus one. And then we have minus F times 1 fourth DV over DI plus F because the FI just becomes F. From here, we see that we can cancel things. And a lot of these questions are gonna look really ridiculous. The answer choices are gonna look ridiculous and they're gonna be scary. But just know that if you know how to set up the problem right, a lot of times stuff's gonna cancel and it's gonna look a lot easier in a couple steps. For instance, this positive thing and that negative thing are gonna cancel. And the F, 1 fourth F, and the positive F at the end there are gonna to combine to positive three-fourths F. And I'll do that in this next step here. So we get the positive three-fourths F plus the one-fourth over DV DI minus one equals zero. That's our first order condition. That's the answer choice we see. So that's our correct answer. The last question says, suppose the solution to Dugan's problem with Marty is to invest IM. And the solution without a monitor is IN. Which of the following represents the most Dugan 
would pay for the information provided by Marty. So we're looking for the value of information. So that's going to be the value with information minus the value without information. Or Dugan's total surplus with information minus Dugan's total surplus without information. Well, this is a long problem. Again, there's going to be a lot of canceling and a lot of ugly looking math. But if you know how to set it up, you're in good shape. We already know the value with information is going to be F times, well, now we're going to go ahead and put in parentheses the value function with IM. The value function is going to be a function of IM because that was the amount that he'd invest with Marty. And we're going to say minus IM all divided by four. That's the times that we're not going to have the holdup problem. Plus one minus F, we will have the holdup problem, though we still will invest the IM, the amount with Marty. Minus, this is with no monitor, we know we're going to invest IN, and we know with 100% certainty we're going to have the holdup problem. So there is no probabilities out here, it's just a 1, and we have the investment by itself, not divided by 4. So this is the right answer, but from here we need to get it into a form that we see it on the test, an answer choice. So just understand that once you've written this, you have the right answer, now it's just a matter of chiseling away at it and manipulating it to make it match an answer choice. So what I see I can do is I can, I can uh, distribute through my F. I can distribute FOIL through my 1 minus F here to this thing. And I'm going to leave the last thing like it is because some of my answer choices have this left just like that is. So that's going to give me a hint to just leave it like it is for now. I can't really do anything to it anyway but besides distribute through the negative sign, which I'm not going to do. So from here, I'm going to start to try to combine like terms and cancel things. And I do see that I can cancel some stuff. This positive thing is going to cancel with this negative thing. And there's going to be some more things that combine as well. And I get 3 fourths times F I M plus V of I M over 4 minus I M minus the no info value, total surplus. Well, I, this is again the right answer, but it doesn't match anything on the answer choices. So I still need to manipulate it a little bit. And the thing I see I can do, one of my answer choices has these two things switched and they factored out a negative one. So I'm going to switch those two things and get VIM over 4 minus IM plus 3 fourths FIM. And now what they've done is they've factored out a negative one from these two things. Very odd thing for him to do. This is probably the hardest part to the problem. I'm sure it has some significance, but if you've gotten to here, you've already uh, completely canceled out two of the options, so at least you'll have a really good guess on the test. And if you didn't see that you could factor out that negative one, again, you'll at least have a good test, but that's all that we've done is we factored out a negative one, therefore we've gotten a factor and factored out the IM. So we factored out a negative one and the IM, and we were successfully able to match an answer choice on the test. Again, these are the, by far the hardest questions the concept is pretty simple. The value of information is just the value with information minus the value without information. So don't try to overcomplicate the big things. Just know that the hard part here is to manipulate it to look like an answer choice given. But if you've set it up right and you have confidence that you have the right answer, you should at least be able to give yourself a really good guess and eliminate a couple of the answer choices.